Okay, so can you introduce yourselves to um, the rest of the audience watching right now? My name is Arlene Gottfried. And um, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about you know your startings in photography, uh, Arlene? I um, started in photography in my neighborhood in Brooklyn when I um, didn't want to go to college. My parents wanted me to go, so I went at night and I chose a photo course just so it sounded like something I could do without having to just listen to teachers and do homework. I knew there was some activity to perform. Yeah, because it's never fun to just kind of sit in the classroom and have the teacher just kind of yap on and on and on. Yeah. And, you know, when it came to, you know, just starting off, when did you kind of discover photography as a way to, um, you know, express yourself and a way to project yourself um, um, with the, the rest of the world? When I had a job during the day and then I went to one photo class at night and it was all men in the class and I mm. was the only woman at the time. Mm -hmm. That's how photography was. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I had gotten, I got invited to a birthday party by one of the guys in the class, mm -hmm. and he had taken a picture of me, <clears throat> and he took a picture of my back, because <laughs> I had long hair and I mm -hmm. had a fake a fur jacket. Oh, that sounds lovely. So then he, uh, I asked him if he ever developed a picture, and he said he didn't, but he'd show me the negative, and he put the mm. negative in the enlarger, uh -huh. and I... Uh, that was when I realized that photography could be more than what you, one would expect photography to do. Before you um, had that, that somewhat magical experience, what did you think about photography? I didn't think much about it. It was just like everybody had a small camera and you'd take it out for some special events. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, um, you know, when you started photography, there wasn't a lot of women doing photography. Well, it was much different than it was uh, than it is now. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you feel that nowadays that you see a lot more women getting interested in yeah, starting of photography? Course. Yeah. And was it when you know uh, when you started off? Why do you think that there wasn't as many uh, women starting? The whole photography? world was different. <laughs> mm. And there were women in many in fewer fields that are now um, open to women to be employed and. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so when I when I look at your photographs, I think a lot of other photographers that you know I I really love and admire, they have you know such lovely images, but at the same time, sometimes they could feel a lot. The images could feel a little disconnected. Uh, when I look at your images, you know I feel like I look at the photos and they look like my, my friends. You know I feel like I'm really there. Um, and can you tell us a little bit more about you know? kind of the connections that you're able to build with the subjects? Was it more that you would kind of see them and just take the photo or would you get to know them before taking the photos or what was, how would you describe it your depends process? depends which body of work it is. Sometimes I knew the people or many times I don't know them. Sometimes I would talk to them and sometimes not. It really depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. And when it came to your approach in photography, you know, do you, did you find that most people were quite open to being photographed or a little bit more hesitant and reserved? Well, it really depends on where you are. Um, and, and also, like, if it's a parade or some event outside, mm -hmm. people are just not paying that much attention to someone with a camera. And now it's so different. Everybody has a camera. It's very mm -hmm. different. Um, the other day somebody, I took a picture of a woman and some man started yelling after <gasps> me as I was walking Really? And that doesn't happen that much, but sometimes people would get angry and it had, would have nothing to do with them. It's not even, they weren't even the subject of the photograph <laughs> and they would get <laughs> they, they would get super anxious and think that you took their photograph. No, they just f find a reason to vent their anger about mm. something. So... You've you've lived in New York for many decades now. I'm a New York, a real New York. A real New Yorker. Yeah. So you know, you 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 grew up in um, I Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn. Yeah. And and I'm still here. Oh yeah. <laughs> and how would you say that 
New York has kind of changed over the years in terms of, I guess, both, you know, the people that just live here and in terms of maybe how, you know, you touch a little bit on this, but how people respond to photography nowadays compared to the past. Well, uh, there's a very different New York now in the 21st century, I think, and it's a different city than the one I knew when I was growing up, mm -hmm. and I don't know, there are, it's, I don't know how to describe it, I'm not too, uh, it's, it's not as interesting to me as mm -hmm. it used to be, and there were a lot more um, unusual people that I mm -hmm. would find interesting. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, it's, yeah. it lost something for me and, and the high rents and mm. the kind of uh, traffic that it's bringing and uh, mm. losing a lot of old businesses that have mm. been around for generations. And uh, that changes the city. Because um, I, I actually lived in Queens when I was a kid from mm. around, um, around when I was 10 to around 12 and a half. And... It seems that over the years there's been a lot of gentrification happening, you know, like you mentioned, the rising rents, um, like even, you know, Brooklyn, for example, I hear that nowadays some parts are even more expensive than Manhattan. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you feel about uh, the gentrification and, you know, just the, you know, the raising rates and, you know, people being pushed out of neighborhoods and... Well, when I, when I was like... A student and you know your age is mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think most people in Manhattan or in businesses here even knew about Brooklyn and now Brooklyn is very much on the map and getting very uh, it's desired real estate mm. everything is I don't I don't really like the changes very much but it does a gentrification seems to leave a lot of people out Mm. Because it, when I look at your work, it's just so beautiful to see the amount of uh, diversity in your images. You know, you seem to have captured, you know, really a wide breadth of, um, you know, New Yorkers in different neighborhoods. And, you know, it is, it is quite sad to see all these changes happening in New York. Um, you know, moving forward, so can you tell us maybe a little bit about, um, you know, some photography projects you're working on right now here in uh, New York or other places? I still shoot a lot of pictures on the street. I don't have a project. I've mm -hmm. had very few projects. It seems like work that I found later kind of came out of work that I was doing mm -hmm. and then I would notice that there's a group of pictures that work together mm -hmm. or something comes out of it that seems to follow a theme. Mm -hmm. But um, aside from the gospel choir, I don't remember ever having a real project. I would mm. do things and go back to them and photograph again and kind of just put them away, you know. And mm -hmm. Like the midnight work was in a, in a, in a shoebox for years. I never thought that mm. that would ever even be published as a book. I didn't plan on it. I, it was just like instinctive things to do was to photograph him and mm -hmm. you know then I looked at it because I realized so many years had gone by and you know my, my freelance work slowed down and then I started to put that work together but I didn't do that with the intention of having a project or any kind of documentation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was just it was instinctive well it's, it's, it's actually quite interesting because you know when I look at your images it feels like a mix of um, you know, documentary, street, but at the same time, your education was actually um, more fashion, if I'm not mistaken. Well, um, th I went to a state school, and fa a fashion institute was a New York State school, and that's what I did, you know, because mm -hmm. they offered photography. Yes. And the other schools seemed to be a little costly, so mm. that's what my parents could afford for me. And but it was mm -hmm. okay. And you've 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 had much of your work published uh, quite widely, and worked with a lot of big magazines uh, doing, um, you know, I imagine editorial work and covering yeah, events photojournalism. and photojournalism. Do you do you see commercial work and your personal work, kind of? You just do do you prefer to separate them, or do you think it's even possible to uh, combine them? They could probably be combined, but I I never did that. I always kept them separate. 
I don't know mm-hmm. why, you know, just the way I do things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, through your projects, you mentioned how you, you know, you shoot a lot and then you seem to, um, you know, edit and sequence them afterwards. Who are some people that you really confide in and you get, you trust their opinions in terms of, you know, editing and sequencing choices and layouts for the books, design and so forth? Me. Oh, it's all yourself. <laughs> oh, wow. High five. High five. <laughs> well, when it came to the books, I worked with the designers, but a lot of the uh, sequencing I did. But, you know, we worked together as mm-hmm. far as bouncing some ideas off each other as how which would go on a page and in what order, you know, things of that sort. And I, and I welcome that help. But for the most part, I, I would put the work together in mm. the, um, the way, you know, the, in, the, in the progression that I would think it would look the best. So you would say for you, uh, editing and sequency is much more of a, a gut instinct, something that just kind of feels right. Yeah, pretty much. Because um, I'm I'm quite interested in um, editing and sequencing, especially for books and projects. And it seems that, you know, f- different photographers do different things. Like, you might see photographers, um, you know, on separate pages have images that, you know, look similar. Or have colors that might uh, coordinate with each other. Um, what is what is your take on, on uh, those different uh, techniques or ways of doing it? It's a personal thing. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't, matching color sounds like decoration or you know, interior <laughs> yeah. design. I, yes. I, you know, it has to have some content and meaning to mm-hmm. me first. And then sometimes things work together because of the, the lighting in a, in a picture. But I, I wouldn't say that's the primary reason that I would put something together. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing, one question I've actually been dying to ask you too is, you know, it, when I look at your work, you have strong bodies of work, both in uh, black and white and color. But just, you know, looking around, you know, what you're wearing and your lovely apartment, it seems that you're a very colorful person. So could you tell us a little bit about more about, um, you know, what really drew you into color and working with, um, you know, that medium to kind of, um, for your photography? Well, first I worked a lot in black and white, and I I really learned processing, and I I became a pretty good printer. I used to enjoy printing the black and white. Yes. Um, And then, I don't know, color kind of came, and I started to do some experimenting shooting color. Yes. And then, mostly my assignments were in color. Every Mm. once in a while I had a black and white assignment. Mm Mm-hmm. But, uh... I don't know. For a while, I was trying to shoot both. Actually, I think oh. I couldn't make up my mind. But I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that anymore. That's too crazy. Um, I was talking to Kevin, and he mentioned that you did most of your work, your color work, on Kodachrome. I did uh, use a lot of Kodachrome. Yeah. How did you How did you feel when um, they decided to, to to discontinue it? Well, that was a real. Or at least the processing. Writing. Yeah. And it's gone. So, um, if you don't mind me asking, um, your more recent, you know, work just shooting on the streets, um, are you still sticking with color or are you just using color negatives? No, or? I was shooting some ectochrome, fujichrome, um, then I went to color negative. Yes. I don't know, I'm just, I don't, I don't really have a strong di- er, a direction right now of what I'm doing. Hmm. I looked at some of the color and then I didn't do too much with it. <laughs> mm. One thing that I found absolutely fascinating is your involvement in the choir. Doing the gospel choir? Yeah, that was a great time. So can you tell me a little bit more about you know how your interest in that happened and I guess how that influenced your photography and how maybe your photography influenced your singing? The uh, gospel choir, I always liked gospel and then I met this group and they were very powerful and I took a picture I saw them at the Lower East Side they had a a performance space called the gas station yes it was an abandoned gas station Mm -hmm. 
and I saw them over there and then I got their card but I was uh, working too much to really follow it up I made one phone call to them oh. but then I had too many jobs <laughs> mm -hmm. but then about a year later the same choir came back into my life and I got involved with them then and I started photographing them mm. there again I was like I feel like it wasn't I didn't really plan it. I was drawn to their music because mm, yes. of their uh, passion, and it was a big choir mm. with a big sound. And how did how did the music make you feel? Well, I always loved it. It was it was powerful. Mm -hmm. And is it something that you still participate in today, in terms of you know singing or? I still sing. I still try to keep singing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know. What are some other inspirations you've had in terms of your photography? Um, are, you, are, are you also interested in reading, uh, writing poetry, movies, anything of the sort? I love movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to read sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm always looking for something that's an inspiration that gives you that energy to kind of that excites you and keeps you going and wants, you know. Any film recommendations? Uh, things, uh, movies that you particularly love? Too many to, to, even, to even remember. I, I just, uh, too many great movies. Are you a fan, like a film noir or maybe? Yeah, I like, of course. I love the lighting in those. Mm -hmm. And... One one thing that one once I'd actually love to hear um, one story behind one of my favorite photographs. Of you the the shot in black and white of um, yeah, it looks like a bodybuilder at um, the beach next to the Hasidic Jew. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us the the story about that? Yeah, uh, that was taken on Reese Beach. They had a nude bay, bay one. A nude bay. Yeah, in 1980. Yes. And um, you could go, you know, you could sunbathe there nude if you wanted to, or you know, wear your bathing suit, whatever. Oh. And uh, I went over there one Sunday, and it was a very hot summer day. And then all of a sudden, this uh, Hasidic Jew in the long black coat and the big hat, and every, he shows up, and the contrast of seeing him there, you know. Mm -hmm seeing him on the beach in the hot sunlight but yes. then a lot of people were naked you know and mm -hmm. it just was very bizarre and then he walked on the sand and he's coming towards us and people went over to him to see what he was doing there you mm. know yeah yeah and uh so i started taking some pictures and then the bodybuilder walked up to him and said to me take a picture of us together because i'm jewish too oh that's that's a great story that was funny <laughs> yeah because you know it's 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 interesting a lot of your photos are very funny but at the same time a lot of your photos are you know are very soulful are very uh humanistic um in 2011 you recently uh published a new book can you tell us a little bit more about uh that yeah, I started thinking of publishing that in 1991, and then in 2011 it got published. <laughs> so, um, uh, I don't know, I have a lot of deep connections to the Puerto Rican community, mm -hmm. and I had the, many friends and artist friends in the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was living in Brooklyn, it it was a very diverse neighborhood, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of different cultures there, and that's when I got to really know a lot of Puerto Rican people. And um, the title of the book is actually quite fun. Can you explain a little bit more about the inspiration be behind the title? Bacalaitos and fireworks. Bacalaitos is a fried codfish, mm -hmm. and it's an indigenous food to the island. Mm -hmm. And one day around the 4th of July, I was on the Lower East Side, and mm -hmm. there was a street vendor calling out bacalaitos and fireworks. He was selling bacalaitos, and he was selling fireworks. So I thought that juxtaposition of the island food as well as the fireworks for the 4th of July was a good, you know, was a good phrase to explain both 
the culture from the island coming to America. How does bacalao eat toes taste? <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd love to uh, try some sometime. Yeah. And one one question. So I have a, I have a good friend. His name is Charlie, uh, Charlie Kirk. What is one question that no one has ever asked you that you might have wished that someone's ever asked? Oh, I'd have to think about that one. <laughs> that's that's difficult. Just off the top like that, I, I'd have to. I don't know. Maybe I could ask you again later, and then yeah. I could to write it down. And um, you know, I have one last question for you because I know it's late. What is some advice you would give to um, photographers who may be more interested in, you know, either, you know, to create images with more soul, with more meaning that you know hits you in the heart? I think it has to be part of you first of all. I mean. Uh, it's very complimentary to hear these things, but I don't think of myself like today I'm going to go out and be soulful. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think it's part of who you are and what your experience has been in, in life to, and what you express and how you express it. Um, for, pe for people interested in photography, young people starting out, I would just you just have to do it and see how it evolves. Hmm. And is there any last things you would like to mention? Maybe um, upcoming talks, exhibitions, workshops? I have nothing on the, on the calendar right now. I just gave a talk last week about my, my book at the Professional Women Photographers. Mm-hmm. Was it last Tuesday? Or was it something? Last yeah, week? last Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> and um, one more quick thing. So who is one photographer, maybe a contemporary photographer, that you recommend people to check out? That I, I think you should check out? That uh, people should see their work. Uh, I just... Uh, Kevin Downs. <laughs> He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a pretty good photographer. All right, thank you so much for your time. All right.